If at this point you can at least see something like that, you're on the right track. This home, uh, this welcome screen lets the person go to log in or sign up. We'll do a sign up first. We need a way to create a user first before letting the user log in. So we'll create a screen for, uh, for sign up. That's going to be based on you know, the template file and such as well. So uh, the sign up screen is going to be very uh, similar to welcome. Actually, it might even be easier to just copy the welcome screen because I'm not going to use the footer again, and I'm not going to use the nav bar again. So copying the starting point of welcome might be better because then we'll just need to change the ID and move these buttons here. <clears throat> so copy your welcome screen, your welcome section code, paste it after itself. We'll call this start sign up, end sign up, remove, um, remove everything in the article, and then very important to set the ID. What should we set that to? PG. PG sign up. Not with the pound because the pound is only when we've got the href. So section data row page PG sign up. That's what we're linking to on the welcome screen right up there without the pound sign. So now that sign up button for a new user will uh, go to a new screen, a new section PG sign up. To be obvious also, instead of the name of the app on top, we can say sign up. So on screen, the person will see this is the sign up screen. <coughs> Here's something we didn't look at previously. We had a navigation bar where you can go from screen to screen. We're not using a navigation bar here. We could. The only thing I really need to do is go back from this screen, one screen back. We have a way to add an easy back button in the app. The web browser has a back button and a forward button, yes, but eventually this will be an app on a real device. And Android devices have a back button built in. You can always go back, but not iOS iOS relies on what's on the screen. So what we'll do here also then is set up a back button in the sign up screen to take us back to the home screen. And we can do this by adding to the header a brand new data property. This one's a funny one, data dash, so in your header, data dash add dash back dash btn equals true. BTN button that will activate a back button. When you test this, test it from the home screen, then go to the sign up screen to test it. If you refresh and you're in the sign up screen, there is no more history to go back to. So when you test this, refresh from the from the home screen, uh, from the welcome screen that is PG welcome. Then there'll be a history to go back to. Just a very quick look to show you. If I'm on here and I click sign up, slides up, sign up, and I've got a back button. Back. If I try to refresh from this screen, there's no history, the back button goes away. So data dash add dash back dash btn true. So this uh, PG sign up, the sign up screen here, we're going to keep it simple. We're going to ask for a person's email and password. We don't need their first name, their last name, their age, or any of that stuff. Simple email and password is enough to create a user in our system. So this will be an input form. 
in the article of PG sign up, we'll create a form. We've seen the form before and we're going to revisit it. An ID so that we can easily access it via JavaScript form sign up. We're going to ask for email, password, confirm password. When we worked with forms, we saw we had the visual part of the form, the word email, which was attached to an input box. So I'm just writing here what we need eventually, and then we fill in that this is a label. This is going to be used for something. Then we'll add the input form, which links back to the text, and that is one unit the text email and the input form. So here we have in email sign up. It's, in, it's used for an input for email sign up. We're going to have a variety of input fields because we have this whole sign up aspect. We have a login aspect. And then eventually we're going to have saving the data to the database, which as I said, that's going to save name of the comic, year of the comic, publisher of the comic, etc. So we'll have a lot of input forms. And it's a good idea to name these something that makes sense. Next I've got an input. Of type email. We have an input field that will only accept email addresses. This is really nice. In the ancient days, you know, four years ago, we would have to uh, program this kind of complicatedly for it to only accept emails. We've got an input type built in of email. Required. We need the person to type an email address here. We won't let them proceed without an email address. That was also cumbersome to program in the old days. Now it's a simple attribute. Placeholder to guide them what they should type here. So whatever email you want. Then it needs a name and an ID. Name and ID will be the same thing as the as the for field, as the for field of the label in mail sign up. In in email sign up. Both the same. It's just the way it is. This name is necessary to link the input field with the label. And the ID is necessary for the JavaScript so that it can capture that value. Putting them both the same is, is a good way to do it. Break, because we need that. And actually, I think we don't need break, actually. Uh, jQuery Mobile, I believe, automatically breaks each of these for us. We'll confirm in a moment. But here we've got the first input field. Sign up an input field. We need to do basically the exact same thing for for the next input box. That password needs a label. It needs an input field. We have an input type of password, which will automatically hide what the person types. So this will be almost exactly the same label A lot of the structure is the same but the details are different in 
password, sign up. An input field, it's a password in our sign up form. Then we've got an input of type password. That will also be required. It doesn't need a placeholder. I think a person kind of knows what to type. Or I suppose you could use the placeholder as a way to guide people. Make sure you've got three letters and two numbers and an exclamation point, you know, special characters. You could guide people in what kind of password to type in. Now, this login system that we're going to create uh, will be very functional. It'll allow multiple people to sign in and all of that. There will still be a few things that we can polish it up with. It won't have like a very sophisticated way for it to check you needed three letters, uppercase numbers, no sequential, blah, blah, blah. That is more complex to, to program, and it's, of course, doable. I don't want to quite get into it yet, so some of the very complex aspects, uh, we'll get to them once we've got the basic aspects working. Input type password, required attribute, name, and ID. So what that looks like so far is, okay, you've got sign up, you go here, you've got a spot for email, you've got a password. Um, <coughs> different browsers might tell you different things here. Please fill out this field, please fill out this field, because required is attached to them. Here I start to type, you know, something whatever, and if I try to go to the next box, it gives you a kind of a warning that that's not a valid type of email address. Please enter an email address. So if I type, you know, something at example.com, then okay, it likes that password. It's required. So if I if I start typing anything there, it'll do those little hidden hidden fields because we've got the type of input field of password. We'll need something similar for the confirm. for in password confirm sign up. Input type is exactly the same. It's another of type password. It's also required. But the difference is that name. The name, the ID, and the for. I'm just going to copy exactly the previous one above. Change that to password confirm. Password confirm.
Okay, so it has a the sign up is going to ask for the person's email, a password, and confirm the password. We need here then a submit button, a button so that when they type all of this in, it processes it, creates the user, and proceeds. So next line. Input type submit is a special case. Let's say so it's an input type of submit. It's going to become a button. It will activate the whole submittal system, means you, meaning you can click or press enter on the keyboard. Uh, it'll also be automatically set up so that when the person types it all up on their mobile device and presses enter on the mobile device, it will also accept it as pressing enter to proceed. The value is that it's going to say the name, it's going to say the words join. And that looks like this. So if I just right now try to press join, it'll pop up saying all of those need to be filled in because they're required. I just try, try to type in gibberish there, gibberish there and there. It'll accept these two. There's no system that it checks the password yet. Clearly this password is shorter than that password. We'll get to that. But here it is then checking. That's not a valid email address. That's valid enough. And that'll accept all of that. This doesn't work yet, of course. We're just building the basic components. back So assuming via JavaScript we'll get all of that working, it'll then take the user to the, uh, to the home screen. PG welcome, PG home. We'll do PG home soon. Let's say instead of the person signing up, they've chosen to click the button to log in. So we need a, a login screen. It's going to look very similar to this one, except they won't have to confirm. Um, they won't have to have a password confirm. It'll have the email, the password, login. JavaScript will then take over to uh, check that that user exists and that the password is correct, and then it lets them in. Now, at the moment, we will not deal with the whole issue of retrieve lost password. That is more complex than we can do at the moment. So we will have a, be, a, a way to log in, log out, and all of that, but we don't have a password retrieval for the moment. We need a new screen that will be PG login. I think it's similar enough to this sign up screen. We can copy that one also and change a few things. So there, this whole this whole PG sign up. And copy it and paste it after itself and change it to be our, our login screen. Okay, so I'm going to copy everything of PG sign up, paste it. And what we need to change here is, this is the start of login, this is the end of login, our ID is PG login, spell it exactly as you spelled it back on PG welcome, if on PG welcome you spell it all lowercase, it better be lowercase here or else the link will be broken. This header is exactly the same. We also need that back button. 
Instead, oh, I can't, I, I can't log in. I don't have an account. I'm going to back button. Same thing there. If you refresh from the login screen in the browser, there will be no history to go back to. So make sure you refresh from the PG Welcome. This is no longer the sign up screen right here. This is the login screen. That login is also a form, but it needs a different ID. We had a form to sign up on the sign up screen, so we'll have a form to log in in the login screen. We will need to ask for their email address and a password, but not a confirmation. We only need the password confirmation when we create the account. So you can remove the second uh, password field. We're asking for an email and a password, not a confirmation. And then we need to change this, these fours and these um, names and IDs. We had in email sign up, this will be in email login, in password login, the inputs should have name, in email login, or password, you see there's this redundancy that should hopefully click, that it makes sense. If we name these uh, elements consistently, we should make sense about how we should change them per individual example. So when we get complex and something doesn't work and we check our developer's console and it says, like, you know, syntax error or uncaught exception or whatever, Maybe the way we name these helps us figure out what the issue was. If you leave this the same as the other input, you'll get errors there because only one thing can have that one name. So this one needs in email login, in email login. If you don't know this trick, you can usually double click on a piece of your code and it'll select that chunk of code. I know that we're used to clicking and dragging, but when you're a real developer, this is a quick thing to do. Double click on something. It will select that word completely. It's very easy, very common that I'm selecting and I move my hand and I select too much, up or down. I'm very used to simply double clicking and it knows enough to select that piece. I want to select the word label. Double click it, it selected label. I want to select that in password login, double click it, it selects it. Find all of these shortcuts instead of clicking and dragging like we're barely learning how to use a mouse. You want to double click to then copy, control C, double click, paste, double click, paste, and do it in two seconds instead of 2.75. And all of those little seconds add up efficiently. This button is not a is not a join button anymore. It's still going to be a submit button. We're submitting this form, uh, but it's going to have some other word here. We can say go. Checking it in the browser. We've got a login screen. Notice the animation. Again, we're going to use the flip animation through navigating most of the main app. We had a different kind of animation for sign up to get their attention that it's a different kind of action. Log in there, flips around, you've got the logins. If I just try to log in, it won't let me. I didn't fill it all in because they're set to required. So j at j.com and password jj, click go. It's not quite working yet. It looks like it's kind of working, but at least it still, you know, didn't. 
it didn't balk at not being filled in properly. Just for fun, I will change the placeholder. This is optional. I'm going to change the placeholder. This is, again, the example uh, to kind of catch people's attention. The placeholder on the login had a certain email to catch their attention. Here's what you should type. I'm going to put a different placeholder in the login box just, again, to catch their attention, to, to, to kind of shake them out of their... Uh, out of the trance of like doing something over and over, there's something different, catches their attention. Oh, I should type my, my email here. Optional, but you can change it to anything you want. And um, we've, got a, we've got a welcome, we've got PG welcome, PG sign up, PG login. doesn't do anything yet, but it looks nice, and this is because of the power of jQuery Mobile. We can create these interfaces quickly. We'll do one more of these screens, then we'll head for a break. We saw in the drawing earlier that there's the two branches. From the PG Welcome, there's the branch of logging in or signing up. Ultimately, either of those eventually take you back to the home screen. So we need a section PG Home. On this one, I will have us copy the template, because this one has more of the pieces of the interface that, that we want. Um, we, we want a more complex navigation bar, and we want a footer. So copy that template, paste it after login. This is now the start of uh, home. Let me mention something here also uh, regarding shortcuts and time savers. Uh, I told you how if you double click something, it'll select it. If you triple click, it selects the whole line. In case you need to select one whole line, you know, triple click, one, two, three, selects the whole line. Double click selects one word, triple click, one, two, three, selects the whole line. One, two, three, four, doesn't do anything. That's what one. What's that? What section are we? the PG home. So if I were going to change that template, ID equals template, double click and change it to PG welcome. What I also find useful, since I'm often using the keyboard a lot, because I'm typing a lot of code, instead of moving over to the mouse to select that and make a mistake and select up here or down here, like I said, triple click, selects a whole sentence. What I also like to do is, if you don't know this trick, on the keyboard, I can't pull my keyboard out, but on the keyboard, if you hold the shift key and you use the arrow keys, it selects one letter at a time. That way you can select very accurately one character, left or right, at a time. So if, if I'm used to using the arrow keys on the keyboard, I'm not using the mouse, I'm using the arrow keys up and down, left and right, if I've got my cursor on the right spot, I'll press and hold it to move faster. If I'm on the right spot, I want to select the word end. I could use I could hold shift on the keyboard and then arrow keys. My hand's already there for control X. I can cut it, whatever. Control V. So I can select individual letters that way. But that might be too slow if I need to select this whole sentence. Too slow. Well, we have these keys on the keyboard that you should get to used to using also home and end above the arrow keys. Again, I can't pull my keyboard to show you. But above the arrow keys you have home and end. If my mouse is if my cursor is right there and I press home, 
it jumps to the beginning of that line. If I press end, it jumps to the end of that line. That's what those keys are for, if you never figured it out. If I press home, it goes to the beginning. I press home again, it goes to the full beginning of that line. Press home, it, you know, very, very useful. Home and end. What could be even more useful is if my cursor is at the home of the line, and I hold shift and press end, it selects a whole line to the end of the line. Then I can control X to cut the line, control V to paste the line. So all of this stuff, obviously, you can do it if you're used to click and drag and select. Whoops, I selected too much. Let me go back. Whoops, I let go. Whoops, let me try that again. Drag it, right click. Whoops, I right clicked on the wrong place. You really need to get used to and practice doing it all from the keyboard. Back in the old days of the original heavy iron, there was no mouse. And people typed all of this with no mouse. And they knew all the keyboard shortcuts. And they knew this shortcut to open up this and to open up that and move here and there without any mouse. I would recommend as a power user, as a power programmer, get used to using the keyboard as much as possible. So I do that all the time. Look what I'm doing here. I'm selecting individual lines quickly. You know, shift left or right, shift end, or if I'm at the end of the spot, shift home, back to the beginning. <coughs> if I want to select from top to bottom, I can do that too. See, I'm going to put my, the mouse way over here. My mouse is out of the way. I'm going to go from here. Shift down is going to select all of the lines down. And yeah, you can click and drag with the mouse, but I find this even faster. Shift up and down, it's going to select everything on that line. Control X, and I've cut it or paste it. And then one more here. This is the really big power user one. If, if I'm trying to select only data position, fixed, you saw that with Shift, Left, I can go back to select it. I can shift and hold it, and then, whoops, I went too far. Another way to do it is you hold shift and control, and then the arrow keys. It will jump like a, like a word at a time. So if I want to jump from data, you know, that'll be shift right four times. But if I do shift control right, it selects the whole word data. Shift right selects the dash. Another shift control right position. And then another and another and another. So I selected that much quicker than shift arrow keys left and right. It's like up here, the word section. I can quickly control shift right, the whole word section is selected. A couple more control shift rights and lefts and all of that, and I've selected a lot more. Which, of course, you can do with a double click, or a triple click, or a click and drag, which I think is very clumsy. So I really recommend practice with the arrow keys. Up and down, left and right, shift left and right, control shift left and right. Shift home, shift end, and then you're a power user. PG home. Home. Just write home on all of these. We'll fix them up in a moment. So we've got a PG home. There's no way to get to PG home yet. We need to write the JavaScript to either create the account or let you log in. So for the moment, we have to trust it works. But we can't get to PG home yet. And then the keyboard shortcut, Control Shift X, Control Alt Shift X, or Control Alt Shift R to run it in the browser. Again, we, there's no way to get to home yet. We just trust that it's there. We'll take our second break here at 7:55. We'll take a break until 8:05. Then we'll start to set up the JavaScript that will actually let you sign up or log in. Thank <laughs> you.